Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today I thought I would share with you something that I just got that is important to me. I've told you that I've kind of gotten back into watches, and I've explained if you watched my watch collection video a couple weeks ago that I just have really always loved watches. Oh my goodness, I first started wanting a Rolex probably when I was in my 20s. And I think it's because, I mean, who doesn't? It's just one of those things. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like when I got into high heels or pumps. And, you know, I had to see what it was like to have a pair of Louboutins. You just hear about these things that are so, supposed to be so good. And I love to, when I can get to the point where I can afford something, I like to try it and just see what the fascination is. That's how I've always felt about a Rolex. And I've always been around people, my grandparents, my dad, people that love watches. I can remember my brother gave my sister-in-law a Rolex right before they got married. And I always went in the jewelry store. We only have one jewelry store here that sells them. Of course, they just sell brand new. Rolexes and I would look at all the different styles and every time I really couldn't afford at all like not even imaginable the one that I wanted because I always wanted a gold one. I do like the stainless steel and I love the two-tone but my first love was always the gold and they're expensive. So I have put that off and put that off, but it's always been in my head. It's always been on my wish list and just different things you're working for. And it finally got to the point where I, you know, was ready to buy one. This is the main reason I want to do this video. When I got to the point where I was serious and I had a general understanding of what makes a Rolex special, I had a general understanding of what I wanted and I was at a place where I could afford it and I knew how much it was going to be, you know, ballpark. There really wasn't a lot on YouTube to help me. I don't know. I feel like I got so much advice from friends of mine and from talking to different watch salespeople and just different experts and stuff. And I want to share that information with you. There's a lot of, I don't know, misconceptions, I think, out there. And so before I go any further, I want to show you the one that I got. And it is so pretty. It's so me. The I'll get into it later, but the guy that I went to that deals with Rolex watches, he had, I would say there were probably... 20 or so to choose from. My parents went first. They looked at them all, talked to them about, you know, what I wanted and everything. My parents were helping me look on, we were looking on Craigslist. We were looking at different places and stuff. And they had seen this guy before that deals, he's like a watch dealer. And he's had his store here for over 10 years. And so they went, they sent me some pictures. And then I think the next week, I went with them and I tried them all on, took some pictures. He was so nice. He let me like put a watch on, walk out to the door outside so I could see it in the light and everything. And then because you're, it's an investment, I went, I came home, watched a lot of videos, you know, thought about it and talked to John about it. John has zero interest in looking at them wearing one, having anything to do with it. So my parents are the ones that love jewelry and stuff like that. So it was also, you know, and I'll go into this later, it was like a special thing because I'll always remember them helping me pick this out. My mom has some really nice watches. My dad has some really nice watches. And so it's just like our thing. And so I went back the next day, tried them all on again, and I always came back to this one. And at first, I wasn't sure that I wanted to spend the money for this, but it just was the best, um, I feel like it was the wisest decision. So it is the, oh, it's the Ladies President Bracelet. That's the name of this bracelet, and it's solid 18 karat gold. And it is the mid-size, I believe it's a 26 millimeter, and it is the date just. It says on here, Rolex. 
Oh gosh, my eyes. It's the date just, the perpetual. It says all the kind of stuff on it. It's got the diamond numbers, the diamond band, and like 18 karat gold. And it's just beautiful. It is very beautiful. Oh, and the face. I seem to be drawn to colored faces. You can probably tell that with my other watches. I like some pizzazz. I like it. There were other ones there that, like there was another one that a lady, a lot of them are estate pieces. There was another one that the lady had barely worn. And, but it was the much smaller face. And that's what my mom likes, but I wanted either the mid or the larger size. And after I put this one on, every time I tried one of the larger ones, this one just looked so much better. The color of this face is grape. It's a grape dial. Put it on, I wanna show you some other things I like about it. I like that it doesn't have like a little, you know, bracket or catch showing. And it's not that I wouldn't wear one that has that. It's just one of the things that I think are so pretty about this. Okay, so let's get into some advice that I want to give to you if you are in my position and you are thinking about buying one. All of the things that kind of came up, the things that made me feel better, the things that helped me make decisions. One thing that really made me feel good is I felt like, gosh, if I didn't buy a brand new one, that I would, I don't know, I felt like I wouldn't be able to trust that it was real. I felt like, what if something goes wrong? And I just felt like, well, is that kind of cheesy, you know? And then I was talking to a friend, and she has two of them. And I was asking her, she says, oh, no, you never buy new. You know, you can get so much of a better deal. You never buy new. And she sent me, you know, pictures of hers. And then the more I started, you know, reading about watches and reading about Rolex watches, that's when I realized not many people either, you have to just be, you know, flush with money or have a, live in a place that you have an excellent selection and you just don't care. You know what I mean? I guess it's kind of like a car, you know, you can get a brand new car or you can get it when it's just a little bit older or whatever. But so that is the first thing I want to say is don't feel like you have to buy something brand new because I felt like that. And as soon as I realized that so many people buy watches that are not new, most people like even, you know, movie stars, some of the best watch videos that I think you guys will like. There's a lot more that I like for other reasons, but like Bethany, 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 you know, Bethany, what is her, um, Real Housewives Bethany, she has an extensive watch collection, and then John Mayer, his watch collection is good. What you need to do is, you need to talk around, talk to people, go to jewelry stores, go to, like, watch repair places, find someone in your area and nine times out of ten it's going to be easier for you than it was for me because i do not live in a place that has a lot of you know we don't have any like watch you know shops or anything like that when i was in miami with sheila we went shopping a little bit at the rolex store there and i really wanted to buy one but they were so expensive i did not know what the heck i was looking at and I was going to settle for a, one that wasn't, a, you know, the steel one when I really wanted the gold. So I was so, I'm so glad that I waited. And even if you end up getting it from a person like off of Craigslist, because I'm sure you can get a good watch from, you know, someone on eBay or Craigslist, have a person you can take it to. Like my dad, I asked him, I said, what if we did find one on Craigslist? How would we know? And he said, well, we would meet him at a jeweler or at the watch guy's work and get it, you know, certified or whatever. Before you feel like you have to buy a brand new one, see what is available out there. Okay. Find out what you like and stick with it. Don't settle. If you can't afford what you want, wait until you can because I think it's too much money. Even if you buy the least expensive one, and I'm talking about Rolex here, we'll get into other watches and other videos. I would just wait until you can afford it. It's too much money to spend on something that you don't want. Do not buy a fake one because part of getting a Rolex, it's like an inner celebration to yourself if you have always wanted one. 
And I waited until I hit like a point in my life where I feel, I just felt like doing it. I just felt like nothing was holding me back. And it's just like, it's a personal thing between John and I. And, you know, it's just, I was at a point where I felt like I wanted to do it. I wanted to mark this time in my life. Everybody will lie to you. Don't lie to yourself. And just the way you feel when you get it and you earn it is so wonderful. So just wait for that. Even if you, you know, do get one off of eBay or something, you need to take it to someone who knows what a worn out Rolex looks like. For instance, there was this gold one in there. Was it gold? Yeah, I think it was solid gold. It wasn't like solid gold. It was, um, I don't know. I, can't, I don't even know what it was now. It was another one I was looking at, and he pretty much told me he would not sell me that watch. That really, it was worn out, and basically, you know, he did not want me to get that one. It was really so worn out, someone didn't take care of it, and it would be better used just kind of as parts or whatever. So this one is, you know, all the different things they say. It's very tight. Like, they always hold the band like this to see if it droops, because then that means the little loops have stretched out. I mean, this one just has all of the engraving and everything that is still like so perfect. It doesn't have a lot of scratches on it. And okay, here is another thing. Say you see this watch and you love it, but you're not crazy about the grape or purple dial. You can get that replaced. You can get a, go take it to a Rolex, authorized Rolex dealer they can buy another, you know, face and they can do that if you would like. But I just happen to like this. To me, this is just like the classic 90s Rolex. Like the women, when I was married the first time, you know, we were in our early 20s and we hung out with a lot of older couples because of his work and like these are what the women were wearing it's just so 90s it's so um i told my mom it reminds me of like dynasty or dallas or something and it's you know i like flashy stuff so it was perfect for me but you may want something you're lucky if you just want something with no diamonds or whatever or not gold a true watch dealer will know you know things to look for things i would have never had any idea so if i didn't have someone helping me i could have ordered one it could have been fake it could have been and even if i ordered from someone that i knew it wasn't going to be fake it could be worn out and i just didn't know it so you know do your research hopefully you can find someone around town and then take someone with you that knows you who is happy for you knows what you like knows what looks good on you knows your personality and is happy for you and let them share in that experience because this is what i was going to say each watch has so much like even those michael kors watches they have memories to me they have youtube memories they have john and i and the kids you know, dragging all around that Tanger Outlet Mall and going to that Fossil Outlet and John buying those for me and, you know, just that whole experience. So each watch, you know, has, even if it's just to yourself, like even if you just buy yourself for your birthday or for some accomplishment, you know, each watch will have like that experience. Now, why is a Rolex so expensive and why do people go for a Rolex first? Matter of fact, the first thing out of my dad's mouth when I said I was ready to start looking is, you know, there's so many watches that are just as good or better than Rolex. You know, a lot of people like the AP, the auto, the, I'll just say AP. I'm not, I know I won't pronounce it right. I'll put it down here. Or the Patek. And I like those, but I always wanted a Rolex. And Rolex has the most known name. They say it's right up there with like Coca-Cola and McDonald's. Everybody, their name is, you know, it's it's just really popular. It's well known. What am I saying? Well marketed. And Rolex has been around so long. I think since the 1950s. Something that makes these, you know, so expensive. Of course, it's going to be the name recognition. It's going to be that they're automatic. They, I love, I love the way a watch is made. I think it is so cool. I love, I've got another watch that I'm going to show you that has a clear back where you can see 
just all the intricate pieces. They're made in-house. That means every, they make their own metals. They make their own tools. They make their own pieces. They put them together piece by piece at a time. And I've heard that it make, takes a year to make a Rolex. They're just, every watch video you'll see, there are fancier watches. There may be prettier watches, better, but a Rolex is just it will last forever if you take care of it. You just have it serviced and it will last forever. Another reason that they are so popular is because the resale value. It's kind of like my Chanel bags, my Chanel Jumbo. I could probably get more for it now than I paid for it because the price keeps going up and it's so classic and the quality is so good and the name recognition. That's kind of how it is with Rolex. And to be honest with you, that is another reason that I chose the solid 18 karat gold and with the diamonds is because I know that this is going to hold its value. I'm not planning on ever selling this watch, but I didn't want to just get something that was going to, you know, be half the value as soon as I bought it. The guy that I work with, like I said, he's been in business for over 10 years here. And then he has businesses in New York and some other places. He said the reason he only, because I asked him, did he have any Cartier? And he said he really only dealt with Rolexes because they hold their value the most. And that's just what he prefers to work with. He did have like some other watches in the back and stuff and diamonds and everything else. But um, Rolex is what he likes to deal with because it holds its value. So I think that's about it. Let's see. And, oh, and when you are looking at the watches, the jeweler can look at the number that is inside, I believe it's inside the back of the watch, and they can tell, you know, what year the watch is from. And I can't, I know this one is from the 90s, and I thought that would be considered like a vintage Rolex, but I don't think it is. I think when people talk about vintage Rolexes, I think they're talking about like 50s and 60s and 70s. I think when you get to 80s, 90s and stuff, it's just a pre-owned Rolex. I think that's how the rule is. If you're not familiar with the automatic, that's something else that you need to think of too. You either you will either need to wear it every day or keep it on a winder that keeps it rotating and that keeps it going or just have to set it and, you know, get it going each time you wear it. So that's another thought that you need to think of. When you're getting into watches too, one thing I had to do was read like the difference between a quartz watch and an automatic. And you know, I remember hearing that's the way you can tell if a Rolex is fake or not, is if it's smooth, because that's an automatic. The quartz is what makes it, you know, it gives it the bolt of, you know, electricity and that's what makes it do like this. But um when you start learning more and more about watches, you'll learn all about that. Don't, if watches are no big deal to you, I would not spend the money. I would just go buy a nice watch that you want. And later on in another video, I'll explain to you the difference in like fashion watches and, you know, I hate to say real watches, but luxury type watches. Like when you're watching watch videos, you will not see them talking about a Gucci watch or a Fossil watch or a Michael Kors watch, unless you're doing like a watch collection. But they're even more into like Timex, Seiko, Casio, something like that. They're not as much into the fashion watches, which I like the fashion watches too. So I will be showing you some different ones. I look forward to it. This one is kind of heavy and I love it. I love a heavy watch. And if you know anything about money and gold, you know gold is up, it's going up. So that will make the gold watches hold their value more and probably make them a little bit more expensive too. I hope this just gives you a few little tips and tidbits and hopefully you will hang with me and watch the different ones that I get. If you don't, it's okay, I understand because my true love is fashion and makeup. I just have always loved watches too. So thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.